We are in our uh, Tomer Devora, sponsored specifically and Bekoach of uh, Shalomo, uh, Lilun Nishmat Shlomo Ben Shifra, whose uh, your site is this Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I forgot to write down the names over here, but uh, also uh, for the Zivugagun uh, of Asher Ben Salah. And whoever else needs a zivug, Hashem shall bless them with a bracha of a chatzacha. Also, if I should live over need, I'm just wondering if I should live there. We're learning Siif Siman Gimel over here. We're over al pesha, right? We're over al pesha. You guys are with me? We're over al pesha. So remember, we said so in Keter itself, which is where we in we are in in Tomer in Tomer Devora. There is thirteen thirteen midot. Okay? Those 13 midot are Kel Rachum Bechanun Erech Apayim. So we did the first uh, two, which is what? We did the first one, Mi Kel Mi Kel Kamocha. The second one we did, Nose Avon. Now we're going to do number three. The Over Al Pesha. The Over Al Pesha, I just want to remind you guys, what was Nosei Avon again? Hashem doesn't just yes. take our... Hashem, Hashem isn't... Hashem is bullied. That's Miel Kamocha. Chas v'shalom. So sad to even his jelly. But Hashem is not only bullied, but he even keeps alive... That's Nosei Avon. The, 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 the one that bullies him. Right? He gives him sustenance. That's even sadder. Right? What's the over al Pesha? It's very interesting how towards the end of the year we're very we're becoming very close to the Ramak. Mm-hmm. I'm getting scared because the Ramak is all a matohu. This is a midagidola. This is a midagidola. I don't want to go to the problem. Not only does Hashem forgive the over al Pesha, he doesn't just send forgiveness by the messenger. He himself forgives. Kedichtiv, ki imcha aslicha. Ma'i aslicha. What's the slicha? Shehu rochetz ha'avon. God takes that prosecutor that we created, he watches it. Kedichtiv, as it says, imrachatz Hashem tzoat b'not ziyon. God takes the excrement, pardon my language, of the daughters of Zion, and he washes it. Not in a weird way. Basically, he's cleansing us. Even though we're full of the excrement from Ayaver, the Gemara says, he quotes uh, the Navi, he says over there that there was a Kohen. Who was the Kohen Gadol of the Second Temple? You guys know? Could we do one Shi'ur of Jewish history over here? Please. For the love of God. Please. Could we be Jewish already for the love of God? Huh? Maybe you guys have a, you guys have a Jewish history Abi. shiur? Yeah. You guys have one? So who was the first coin gadol of the? Z- not Jewish history. Oh like, my God! You're killing me. Right? So, no, she wants that. It was like the fourth. Huh? We learned Tach like that, not this Jewish. Oh, you learned the later Jewish, yeah, uh, later one, the later one. Okay, but we're just gonna learn. Okay, but same Tach is also important. Sixteen oh eight, sixteen forty eight, sixteen forty nine. Chem Oh, why why specifically Tach I don't know. I think it's before. Um, why does he start from Tach No, he goes a little bit before oh, yeah. that. Also, like the Vilna Gaon, like this type of thing. Yeah, and also the yeah. Fake Mashiach. Yeah, it's not like Jewish. You guys learn, I call it modern Jewish history. You see what you do when you don't sit over here, what happens? You miss the whole shiur is not the same, but real. Now that you're sitting over here, we feel the the fire again. Oh, see uh, see <laughs> anybody remember who was the first one at all? In the second oh, temple. So Sorry, the second the temple. Second. No, he was at the end. You close. No, before Kashmonai. The guy who was, who was killed, right? Stone, stone. He was not stone. What's his name? Zach. Zach. He was not stone. Matthew. No. Ah. Uh, was stone. No. Who was? Uh, 
He was prophet too, no? No, you're yeah, you're you're in the end of the first temple. Oh, you see, he's coming back. He's coming back. Yehoshua uh, Kohen Gadol. You said Yehoshua right now? Oh, you you take it. But you're good. I like that. You gotta think outside the box. Yehoshua Kohen Gadol, right? His father was Seraya Kohen Gadol. Seraya Kohen Gadol was the last Kohen Gadol of the first temple. Okay, so Seraya. Had Yoshua Kohen Gadol, Yoshua Kohen Gadol's younger cousin was Ezra. Okay, his younger cousin was Ezra. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was his younger cousin. I got a double check. Some of all the names, yeah, but they were very close. The first cousins, or he was his younger brother. I'm pretty sure it was his younger cousin. Okay, Ezra Hakohen was much stronger in Torah than than uh, Yoshua Kohen Gadol. But Ezra took the Kohen, but uh, uh, Yoshua took the Kohenship over Ezra. Why? Ezra didn't want to leave Babel. Why? He didn't want to leave his Rebbe as an old man. His Rebbe, Baruch ben Neria, was still a very uh, vibrant rabbi in Babel. And he said, I can't leave my Rebbe. He still has Torah to teach me. And I'd rather stay and learn Torah then go back to Eretz Yisrael with the first wave of Aliyah. From here we learn, to learn Torah, you're allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael. This is one of the sources. There's a couple of reasons why you could leave Israel if you were already living over there. One of the reasons is to learn Torah. If there's a Rebbe outside of Israel, you could go learn Torah by him. So Ezra didn't go up with the first Aliyah wave. His older cousin went with, went with them, with Zerubbabel. His name was Yoshua Kohen Gadol. And Connected to what we're saying over here, the Malach says to Zachariah, not this Zachariah, you were saying a different Zachariah. He says to him, what do you see in your vision? He had a vision of Nivuad. He says, I see Yoshua Kohen Gadol and his clothing is all filled with excrement. I don't want, you know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Number two. And, and uh, the Gemara explains why was his clothing filled with excrement? Because his sons, and he was the Kohen Gadol, were married to Goyot. I'm learning this for the 50th time. I'm still shivering all year. You understand what I'm telling you over here? The Kohen Gadol's son was married to a, to a Bavliya, to a Kazadian. Yeah, it was a very sad thing. Assimilation was the biggest thing in the, in, the, in the beginning of the Second Temple. The Gemara says that's why they were in Zohe to have miracles like Moshe Rabbeinu. They had to have that. If they did, everybody would have went up. But because they were so assimilated, now in, the first, in Mitzrayim, say what you want to say about them in Egypt, they never assimilated with Goyim over there. Crazy to think of such a thing. 210 years. Slaves. 400 years since Avram came to Canaan. No assimilation. Uh, insanity. Pure insanity. I think because they made up slaves and kind of had the resistance. I would say in the opposite. In Excuse Bavel me, I want to say nice. one thing. I'm sorry, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but I want to say something against what you're saying. Many Americans, when they check their DNA, they find a lot of African-American DNA over there. Because during the whole slave era over there, there was a lot of... Uh, Chimichangas. <laughs> and um, it's true. But, but uh, they didn't they didn't assimilate. And how do we know that? When we came out of Egypt, it says that their names were the Yutke over there. Every Shevet had Haruveni. What's Haruveni? Hey, you, Yutke. That's the name of God. Hashimoni. Halevi. Right? It had all the Yutke in there. Because to show... Even Yo Yosef's name was the highest. Yehosef. Yehosef. God added that hey in there because he did not. Osnat was not a, a Goya. Right? Very big thing. It's not, it's not something simple over here. What you're so it says Hashem was watching the Tzoat Zion. What does that mean? The excrement that comes. I can't even say the word anymore. That thing that comes onto the Jewish people comes from Hasralom, like Yoshua Kohen Gadol, right? Even that Hashem washes off. Even that, and also in the Navi, it says over there that God washed, that they washed, it burnt all all the klipot, all that thing from off Yoshua Kohen Gadol. He burnt it off. 
What was the zikhut that Yoshua Kohen Gadol had to get her off? Anybody here know? I'm telling you, we're having a good next year. It's Jewish history. Enough. <coughs> Enough. And not tachvatat. We're going deep. We're going biblical. We're going Navi. What was the zikhut that Yoshua Kohen Gadol had that that, that not nice smelling thing got taken off of him? He moved to Eretz Israel. It's not easy, your boy say. You leave your house. You leave your wife. You, uh, your wife, but well, you leave your king. business. Do you know they lived like kings over there? But he moved to Eretz Israel. I'm saying he was living in Babylon. Oh. He got up and he was a chut. Mishane makom, mishane mazal. Took off from him all that. Yeah. And then he died later on. And then Ezra Cohen came. After. Ah, uh, Ezra Cohen. Oh, he was the innovator. You know? He brought back the Aleph Bet. Because our language, the Ivory language, anybody here know world history? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the first civilization? Egyptian. Wrong. Wrong. Chinese. Huh? What's the first civilization? As a history teacher, you're painting me right now. China. Good. What's it called? Sumerian. 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 So if you look at the Sumerian letters, it's almost identical as the ancient Hebrew letters. And what's the ancient Sumerian city? Ur. Where did Abraham Avinu come from? Ur Kazdi. Right? So we're Sumer. we're from ancient Sumer. The Jewish people. <coughs> Abraham is from ancient Sumer. Right? He's an Ivri. I thought we were from Israel, right? Kakoy Israel, what do you mean? We didn't come from Israel. We emigrated to Israel. Our forefather Abraham was told, Lech Lecha! Go! We didn't come from Israel. Abraham Avinu was the son of Terach. Terach was Hammurabi's Pope. Ever heard of Hammurabi? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hammurabi was, so you, we, also, we also have to do world history here? Hammurabi was the ancient Sumerian king, the code of Hammurabi. Some say he's Nimrod. Who was Nimrod? Terach? <laughs> Hammurabi. 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 It's a famous theory. Guys, Jewish history and world history is intertwined. All right? That's why we're always in the news, guys. Pay attention. Zelensky came to visit America. Anybody heard about it? Yeah, what did anybody hear about? The pagers. The pagers, right? The beepers blowing up. Yeah, he came over here begging uh, Biden last minute did because Trump is about to be up. They say he has a very good chance. All right? And they say he's a, he's a, he, wants to, he wants to beg Biden to give him that last minute. He wants weapons. Anybody hear about it? No. Who was there yesterday? Two days ago? Yeah, he's got yeah. Who is everybody here about? The Israeli prime minister. Say Erev Rav, say whatever you want, but that's the fact, right? So, anyways, Tzoat Zion, and also in our Galut, we have a lot of Tzoat Zion. Hashem has to wash off Tzoat Zion. You know, when we're in class, we don't let kids sit by the by the by the wall. You know why? I sit by the wall. <laughs> and it's funny, when one kid falls asleep, it's like a domino effect. Shh, the whole class falls asleep. <laughs> it's, it's contagious. I will throw into you purified waters. What's purified waters? It's the mikveh. Guys, don't be mezalzel in the mikveh. Right? Go to the mikveh. If you're going to Kevrot Sadikim, go to the mikveh before and go to the mikveh after. Of course, 100%. Sholeach memei rechitza, he sends you waters of purification, of washing. The over, and he, Hashem washes you himself. Vine mamash, how do we use this in our life? Kidmut zet tzarech leot a person has to be like this household. Shelo yomar, you shouldn't say, Bechi ani metaken ma sheploni chata o veshchit? Am I fixing what a person sins or does in avera? Lo yomar kach. So, a person makes an avera to you. He hurts your feelings. You shouldn't say, why should I forgive him? He did it. He should fix <coughs> what he did. Why should I help him? You have a family member who went off the derech. You shouldn't say, okay, he went off the derech. 
Why should I care about him? Says the Ramah Akidaka. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'atzmo Rochetzet Avono Shal Adam. Did Hashem do the Avera? No. You did the Avera, but yet Hashem comes to you. Lo Ali Desh Aliyah! Not even by a messenger. He comes to you himself. Verochet Tzuat Avono. He cleans you himself. Umikan Yitbayesh Adam Lashub Lachto. From here, a person should be very embarrassed to do Teshuvah. Because why, why would you be Torech, the king, to wash your tzoah from your clothing? Why would you force the king to wash off your, let's call it, the stain? Diaper, diaper. Right, from your, from your clothing. A person should do it himself. And a person shouldn't say, he did the Avera. Let him take care of it himself. No. Did Hashem, why? You're not paying for him. No, pray. Yeah, pray for him. Help him. Be mekar of him. Sometimes it's very hard, you know? Sometimes you see a guy go off the derech and it burns you inside. It burns you inside. Why? Okay, do an avera. But why do you have to make yourself from head to toe tattoos? I make one, make two, make six. Everything! It burns you inside. That's bad. Why? You gotta talk to yourself. Be like, if Hashem washes off your your this tzoah he put on himself could at, is, all, is at least in this world. It's going to go off eventually. But your tzoah, your tzoah, yours, Hashem cleans it himself. How are you going to look at a person, other person down? You can't. So therefore, a person should kafzechut and also should do teshuvah as soon as possible. Don't make the king wash your tzoah so much. He washes it anyways. What do we say in Yom Kippur? Ki bayom azeh yechaber alechem metaher etchem mikol chatotchem. Lifnei Hashem titeharu. In front of Hashem, in front of Hashem, we will become tower. What does that mean? In front of Hashem, we become tower. He says over there, on this day Hashem washes you. It's a lot of argal, oh. It's crazy to think of such a thing. A king should come down and wash you? It's the laundry machine. Oh, crazy. Wow. Laundry machine is getting him just now. <laughs> oh, here's without the getting him. Oh, here he just cleans you. Okay, guys, what am I going to tell you? Some advice coming up the last week of Rosh Hashanah. Number one, Rabbi Isai, forgive everybody. Don't take it to heart. You, you're chayav much worse things anyways. So don't take it to heart. Forgive everybody. You know, today I was, we were, I, we took our yeshiva to the dinner of Arabia. I'm telling you something personal. Dinavari is one of the big Hasidic Rebbe's in Williamsburg. I don't know how big, I don't know the whole matzah over there, but it looked pretty big. We've been there already three, four years in a row. Hashem should give the Rebbe a flash. He seemed very sick. You could tell by the cough, right? The cough is strong, strong and full of phlegm. So, um, you know, the rabbi was speaking, 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 and I could tell that he wasn't feeling well. Apparently he just had surgery. And um, I was thinking to myself, because I'm trying to finish Tikkun Ezoar before Rosh Hashanah. Obviously, I'm not going to make it. But at least before Yom Kippur, I'll, I'll, I'll try to finish it. And I said to myself, as I was reading Tikkun Ezoar, Tikkun Ezoar is a certain part of the passage of the Zohar Kadosh. It's big, but it's, we finish it during the month of Elul. Okay? If you have time. And I said to myself, as I was reading, I said to myself, Shalom, I said, Every person knows the Averot of his soul. I said, I don't think you got any Olam Abba. I said to myself these words. Now, when I say this to myself, it's not like you're telling this to yourself. So let's not put ourselves in the same category over here. But these are the words I told myself. I said, I'm reading the Zohar and I'm feeling you know, really good about myself. I said, you know, I, you know, it's not looking good, this Rosh Hashanah. And um, I was looking for a Zahut. And I looked at all the kids in my class. A lot of kids over there, their fathers are, unfortunately, they come from mixed marriages, assimilated marriages. The kids are, you know, gangster families. Yeah, not, so, not everybody, not everybody, some. And I look at these kids and I said, all these kids are a piece of Hashem. They're a piece of Hashem. And I said, how I'm going to treat these pieces of Hashem, that's how Hashem is going to treat me. 
And suddenly a very big happiness came to my heart. Mm. As I was in Williamsburg in the din of a Rebbe's house. And I, and I started to love each one of these kids. And don't mind you, these kids can be pretty vicious. And I started to love these kids. And I said the greatest thing that I could do for them, for the Rosh Hashanah is to treat, I, I was thinking these kids, right? But because, you know, if you treat these kids beautifully, you could treat any, any person with Ahava. But for you guys, and I, as I look at this guy, I'm like, wow, these are pieces of Hashem. The way I treat them, Hashem will treat me. And I started to love them very much. I won't tell this to their face, obviously. And uh, what will I tell you guys is that when you look at another Jew, the greatest thing you can do is treat another Jew with respect and love. Because it's like you're treating Hashem with love. Because they're all pieces of Hashem. Treat every Jew with respect, with love. Don't, don't look down on him. Whether he's tatted, or whether he's masked, or either he's you know this class taught me a lot you know how many times I finished Tomei Devora there was a time we used to finish Tomei Devora once a week once a week we used to finish Tomei Devora but you know what today I'm going over it again it's like I never learned it again I never, it's like I never learned it it's the Torah is so sweet you know it so changes a person it's such a hava balib and could you believe yeah, I didn't have this feeling in a long time. I looked at these at these little Jewish kids. Some of them are behemot. They're, they're big. They're like six feet tall. Six, six, like they're huge. I don't know what they, they feed kids these days. I don't know. It's a chicken, I'm telling you. They're putting something in the chicken. And I see this kid, I'm like, wow. They're pieces of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Look at another Jew and say he's a piece of Hashem. Love him. Hashem will love you back. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. 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 Amen.